you will then take this and apply it to whatever you are doing. And your work will be that much more exceptional because you'll know what you're looking at. That's the whole point. I can't look at all this stuff. And I don't, I don't have the resources to go onto the ground, nor do I even want to go to India, really. It's not something that calls me. I don't really want to study all these other languages. I'm just putting it out there to show people that there is a system. And if you actually do the work, you can see it. And then those of you who are fluent, because one of the, here's the, one of the challenges about language. There are things like idioms that do not translate into other languages. And if you don't know how to have, like what that means, like, uh, what's a good one? If I asked you, Pat, you putt from the rough, do you know what I'm saying? Say it again. Do you putt from the rough? I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. So in England, uh, sorry, in New England, <laughs> there's a, uh, that's a saying, are you gay? You putt from the rough? How are you going to, you can't even in a modern American climate translate that. So how is somebody 2000 years later going to know what the hell that is? Even if they know what the game of golf is. There's another one. I found out this because I live in a different part of the country now. And so I have all these things in my language that relate to old English because I'm from New England. I'm from one of the oldest parts of New England. And so one of the things I say when I go golfing is you want to hit the links but out here, people have never heard that before. They don't know what that means. I'm like, what, you golf? I thought you golfed. And like, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, you hit the links today? They have no idea. And it's because it goes back to the links in Scotland or something like, like in, in, in old English word, uh, old English terminology. So this is one of the challenges that if you don't have the mindset of that culture, you're gonna, not going to, you're going to have that much more difficulty in understanding the language which is why we need to get people brought up to speed all around the world. The problem is this is work that really can't be done unless you're from a, a, a nation that's like uh, not in just survival mode, right? And that's the problem is a lot of these cultures that have all this uh, antiquity, this amazing like rich history, they're barely surviving. So they don't have the luxury to do this work. You know, it's kind of like the tragedy of the Irish. The Irish didn't have the luxury to keep a, a dictionary, right? They're fighting the fucking Danes. They're fighting the Saxons. They're fighting the English. They're fighting everybody just to survive because everybody, they, they were stationed. They happened to be in Albion. And, you know, it's like trying to be in Israel. You're not going to be at a trade hub of the world and live in peace. Because as soon as the empire that you had that had control of that is gone, they're not there to protect you. Everyone else is going to come in. So if you want to try to keep that land that you that you know you've grown up on, spending your family, it's not going to happen without war and without being able to defend yourself. So all that rich history that you know that would connect all the dots where most of us are looking for is not being recorded. And so we're losing that Irish language, which is a key because the Irish language comes from the Phoenician. Or if it doesn't, it just happens to be the same 17 letters that the Phoenicians gave to the Greeks. And if that story is um, even remotely true, that would be circa 500 BC. Um, but we were talking about like, uh, uh, remember how like in the pre-show you're talking about like, uh, series, you know, all those yep, like yep. The, the C words, right? Well, one of those is going to be 